To discuss some of the issues raised by that report, I'm joined now in our Paris studio by Nabila Ramdani, a freelance journalist who specialises in Anglo-French issues, Islamic affairs in the Arab world, and Elizabeth Amoute, a commentator and journalist, and Jacques Miard, a deputy and a member of President Sarkozy's party, the UMP. Good evening to all of you. Uh, Professor, uh, Monsieur <laughs> Miard, is the news that Britain is sending Apache helicopters to Libya a sign of greater, even greater, Anglo-French cooperation? Well, from the beginning on, I mean, the England and France has been standing together in this issue. And it shows that both countries are concerned what's going on in Middle East and the Arabic world, especially in Libya. Uh, the interest for Libya has not started yesterday or the day before, you know. Even when we had cooperation ties and agreement with uh, Libya, we have solved in, in the past all this terrorist issue, you know, because the French has opposed the Libyan leader the question of the UTA which has been uh, bombed by Gaddafi and you had your British this Lockerbie affair and um, the way it has been solved we had the very close links between both countries toward Libya so this is in fact uh, Libya has been an Anglo-French affair but the signs are at the moment that the military intervention has not worked. This is why we're sending helicopters you to see, the planes. No, you see, in fact, uh, we are bound and fortunately bound by the UN resolutions which prevent us uh, to uh, send any troops on the ground. And I think this is right. And we are not going to do it. It has been uh, repeatedly said by our foreign minister, Alain Juppé, and France is not going to send any troops on the ground. But uh, these air attacks, either by plane or helicopters, are uh, in conformity with the UN resolution and um, what we see now on the ground is that the rebels movement is uh, getting stronger and stronger every day so I think it's just a question of time so that um, Mr. Gaddafi goes. Nabila do you think there's, there's support in France for this policy of getting involved in Libya? No, I don't believe so. You know, uh, Libya doesn't have any historical ties with uh, France. It's not a former colony. I don't think uh, the French are supportive at all of uh, France's involvement in Libya. Uh, if anything, they were very critical of President Sarkozy when in 2007 he invited Gaddafi on French soil for a five-day visit, allowing him to plant his tent right across the street from the Elysee Palace. He dined him at the Ritz, <coughs> he gave him a tour of the Palace of Versailles, and uh, he, uh, President Sarkozy, was hoping in return to sign very lucrative uh, ar uh, arms deals with Gaddafi. And in actual fact, Gaddafi uh, snubbed him because he promised uh, a, a deal and he ended up uh, buying uh, jets from Russia in the end. So I think one of the motivation of uh, uh, President Sarkozy in getting involved in Libya is to get his own back and also to make up for the uh, appalling um, uh, mishandling of the pro-democracy movements in Tunisia and in Egypt. I can't agree with let's that. remember, let's not forget that the ex-foreign uh, sec uh, secretary, uh, Michel Alliot-Marie, made that appalling speech in Parliament uh, offering military and financial support to Ben Ali in Tunisia. And now the French are trying to rewrite history, showing alleged support for pro-democracy well, groups. But do you think, do you think that the, the new action on Libya, the change of stance, the total change of stance, w has benefited President Sarkozy in the opinion polls at all? Absolutely not. He's at the lowest in the polls uh, in the whole history of the Fifth Republic, 23%. And he's trying to, because he failed again appallingly in his domestic policies, to try to make up for it, to try to win a trophy over Libya. He knows his, uh, uh, his, his, his chances to win the forthcoming elections are very feeble indeed, and he's trying to exit with a trophy in, uh, over Libya. Mr. Mir, you I, obviously I, I, don't no, agree with that. I am laughing at such uh, appalling analysis. Uh, first of all, you seem to be led to forget that, uh, you know, this Libyan leader has been crashing down his own people. And this was the motivation for the UN to intervene. We've so heard I'm the sorry, about I'm very Nadej. sorry. It we very clearly to said, to we same. very clearly said this is our, you know, our mission to prevent this crushing down. And many Libyans, you know, who have been shouting in Benghazi, long live Sarkozy, this is not you, I agree, but this is a fact. Secondly, uh, we are not uh, going to go on the ground, and this is nothing to do with the coming election in France, because I can tell you one thing, the foreign policy will not be at stake in the 
uh, in this coming presidential well, you election. Say that, you can't speak because, for the French. No, 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 no. Um, first of all, I speak for myself, which is quite enough. And secondly, I would say... Well, 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 I would well, say... Well, I hope I you No, no, please. You've, secondly, all, you've all been speaking for yourself. And let, us, let me ask Anne Elizabeth a question, moving on slightly. Do you think that there is a, a, a new period of Anglo-French cooperation now, that David Cameron and President Sarkozy are getting on so well on this issue that it, it means something wider? Well, I think it's the first test of the Anglo-British Treaty, and it works well, and I'm fascinated by the fact that our single aircraft carrier, the Charles de Gaulle, is actually performing well, because God knows that uh, a ship has spent more time in being fixed than on the high seas. So uh, the omens are very good, and uh, you know, Napoleon believed in luck for his generals. Uh, I think it works out. I think it works out for both of them. I think they... Uh, um, have put something in this. I think if it had not worked out for Cameron, uh, there are still diff hard feelings about, you know, between the French and the English navies. To you, the navy, the senior service. To us, the navy is important, but it's much more peripheral. Uh, the fact that they're working together probably is a good thing. In terms of Libya, um, it's support. It's not, you know, directly bombing from, from, from the seas. Uh, I don't think it's a major issue in France, and I'm not sure, I, as long as there aren't troops on the grounds, I don't think it's a major political issue in Britain either. Now, we'll, we'll come back to other major issues in a moment. We, we will have to move on. I know you all want to jump in again. You're listening to The World Tonight with Jonty Bloom in Paris. Here in France, of course, the most recent headlines have not been dominated by Libya, Serbia or the G8, but by the scandal surrounding Dominic Strauss-Kahn. The former head of the IMF was expected to be the Socialist Party's candidate for the presidency next year. Now accused of rape in New York, his political ambitions lie in ruins, but the scandal has also not done much for the reputation of the French media. The, the French privacy laws and a code of silence amongst journalists have kept the personal lives of politicians very very private. There's no shortage of news in France or even of newspapers here in Paris like in every other French city there seems to be a newspaper kiosk on almost every street corner. This one on the Rue de Monceau is just like all the rest. It has all the serious papers but also a wide range of magazines covering sport, TV and film. And just like in the UK those magazines all have page after page of scandal and gossip. But the one thing you're unlikely to find is a mention of a politician's private life in such magazines or in the serious papers. There's a code of silence in France about such matters. And even when a scandal does leak, people and journalists pay little attention to it. Four years ago, Tristan Banon, a French journalist, told a late night talk show that she'd been sexually assaulted by Dominique Strauss-Kahn. <laughs> <laughs> Although his name was bleeped out on the broadcast, Dominic Strauss-Kahn is pretty easy to lip-read in French. Everyone knew she was the daughter of a famous French socialist as well, and yet nothing was done. Tristan never pressed charges, but no journalist chased the story either. Jocelyn Ackenborg, a lecturer in media studies at the University of Pantheon in Paris, says that's down in part to the strict French privacy law. This is true that the law is very, very protective on a private life. Now there is also another aspect, which is truly the proximity between the politicians, I mean important politicians and the journalists. And of course, there are pressures on the journalists. But it's now exactly that cosy relationship between the political and journalistic elites that's facing the most scrutiny. Certainly some, if not all, Parisians seem less worried about keeping the private lives of politicians private these days. I think a uh, uh, politician has to be uh, as examples for the population, so they have to be careful about uh, what they do. Uh, and for me, it has to, to, stay, uh, to stay private because what's important for French people is uh, the opinion of politics, not uh, their private life. I don't care about the private life of people. Uh, I think it need not stay private and it has changed after the DSK case because I think that they owe it to the public. I mean, they get a lot of responsibility and if, especially in a situation like this, there's no question it's not private. And young journalists coming into the industry may be less deferential. Certainly Clément Gassi, a postgraduate student of journalism, thinks that France has something to learn from the Anglo-Saxon press. We, we should maybe take this Anglo-Saxon approach to facts, just only facts, and, and more uh, investigative journalism. 
in France, we, there is a tendency, I think, in the in the mainstream media to to concentrate more on commentary, in editorials, in um, to know what people think, and may, maybe we should uh, concentrate more on on invest investigation which is a core of, of a journalist's role. In the end, what it all comes down to is how far the right to privacy extends. Having a mistress or even a second family doesn't seem to do politicians any harm or even raise an eyebrow in France. But, says Professor Arkenborg, does the code of silence allow some politicians to prey on women? This is, in fact, the real problem. And the journalists in France are in a double bind between perhaps the new things what did they knew exactly? What is a matter of just morality? Or was it, was it a matter of criminal attitude? And whether they had to reveal it or not. And, you know, at the moment, they are just in between, between two sort of pressures. And in the end, this is what might come back and bite the socialists. At the moment, the polls say they aren't suffering at all because of this scandal. But Patrick Vell, who lectures at the Sorbonne, says that may not last. For the last four years, Strauss-Kahn was out of the political debate and the Socialist Party won some local election very well. So they might not need him to win the next election. But you can have another scenario where people can say, if it's everything now becomes clear that it was it is the truth that has been described by the accusation, how could the socialists cover uh, this guy among them for so many years? And then, of course, there's the elephant in the room, President Sarkozy, watching the socialist problems grow, moving to take votes off the Front National, and now about to become a father again. A bouncing baby and a bounce back in the polls, and perhaps it could be back in office after the elections. Well, to discuss some of the issues raised there, I'm back with the panel. And Anne-Elizabeth uh, Moutet, you were editor of Voici, uh, a celebrity magazine. You've crossed politicians in France. Can you just tell us what happened to you? Well, I didn't cross politicians at Voici because we were very safely writing about celebrities. I had a, a slush fund to pay for lawsuits, but it was all about things that you now possibly get a super injunction against in, in Britain. Uh, but years before that, I was freelancing for the Sunday Times and working for a French weekly, VSD, and I interviewed uh, Valérie giscard the former president, with a photographer from the Sunday Times, Sally Soames, and a tape recorder. And at the end of the interview, I asked very polite questions about the diamond scandal, asking him if he thought it had cost him the election. And he said it did, and went on to explain what the diamonds were really like, and how much they cost, and how little they cost, rather, etc. So then his people rang me up afterwards and I said, yes, I did what you said. I asked the question at the end. He was very good. We want to suppress this. He doesn't want the word diamonds used in conjunction with uh, uh, with him. And I said, it's a bit late. It's 82. He's lost the election. Anyway, to cut a long story short, um, he did not manage to get it out of my uh, relatively sympathetic interview in the Sunday Times. He got me fired from my French job. Sunday Times hired me and it was a very good experience in what French politicians can do uh, when when you cross them. But it was also a very interesting education on how the um, uh, uh, pack of my French colleagues all attacked me without even asking me what I'd done and whether it was true that I'd made it all up. There was a tape, there were pictures, etc. So that was a very good education in this. Nabila, no. That's one very good example, and we've seen others uh, in recent history. President Mitterrand had a secret family and, and so on. But the problem is not whether people care about those kind, kind of things in their private life, but whether hiding those kinds of things allows politicians to hide much more. Well, absolutely, and I think uh, uh, France has a very a deeply disturbing approach to the administration of public justice when it comes to the great and good, and especially uh, to politicians. And they're very much hiding behind pri privacy laws uh, not to hold uh, these people uh, accountable for the uh, uh, actions, and that includes uh, political scandals, but also uh, uh, sex scandals. And uh, it's important to, uh, uh, you know, your, your reference to Mitterrand is, is an important one, because what happened in his private life is, you know, is private, but of course his hidden family, his secret daughter, was living on, on taxpayers' money. So that, and in that respect, he should have been held accountable. And he was um, also um, using, abusing his position to uh, indeed uh, hack uh, uh, journalists and uh, other politicians to put pressure on them not to uh, um, uh, put the story out, as it were. 5,000 mm. illegal wiretaps. Mm. But do you, that is an awful lot when, when the story in Britain is the newspapers bugging the politicians. 
But, uh, uh, Mr. Miao, if I could ask you, you're a politician, presumably your party will benefit from the problems of the socialists, but do, do you think there's a wider issue about politicians getting away with things? i tell you one thing. I think that I'm quite surprised by what I just heard, because, in fact, you know, this is confusing with private life, and the diamond is no private life. It's public scandal. This is something else. But the question of if you have a yeah, politician as a second family, this regards himself only you know this is but only a question on taxpayers no, no 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 wait a minute it, it's, it, 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 the it girl the, the, the daughter i agree on that i agree on that that she's that. been living on the cost of but on the other hand she has to be protected because if or this by look, hold on no, hold no, on no, please no, keep cool <laughs> you know it's just a question that if this daughter would have been seized by anybody and then blackmail the president, it will be a genuine security law I can't problem. The French of course, just no, 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 I'm but not but attacking... Let me, no, let me ask you a question, Mr. The, the problem is not whether any individual case is justified or not, but the fact that the press are too scared no. and, no. and politicians no. know because they can get away oh, with no, it. No, 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 that wasn't the case <laughs> because they forgot to say that in the Mitterrand case, it has been raised by the press. It has been Nine raised years by the press. No, death. it has been raised by the press at the moment. And you know, that's it, because You're it should history, be cool. But it has been raised by the press, and there was a black. They, they've One tried. Time. They've tried to blackmail the president. You know, it has been even a scandal. But, uh, the question is, where does private life begin and stop? I would say that all this question of sex, as long as you don't go beyond this uh, penal legal line, because rape, assault, it has nothing to do with private life. It's uh, sex crimes and should right. be dealt as such. Okay. But if, on the other hand, you know, there is nothing new in, in the world, nothing new under, under the shine, under, under the sun, you know, this question of private life, because this is not only, only men, this is also women who want to have their private life. And Elizabeth, could I just ask you, is this the way the French actually prefer it? They don't want to know. The, the, I think the, it's changing. I think it's changing because I think the French are slowly realising that when you're used to lie with impunity about anything in your private life, you end up lying with impunity about your public life. Rubbish. And Mitterrand was a very interesting example. He lied to us about his bastard Vichy. He lied to us what? about his. He lied. He lied to us very much about this. He lied about his uh, second and third family because you're forgetting this nice <laughs> Swedish woman, Christina Fosli, and her son. And um, he ended up wiretapping uh, 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 in a way that, you know, makes the murder press look like pikers, uh, uh, the, the uh, half the French political and media class. Uh, and he's not the only one. I just don't want to take it on the left and just on Mitterrand. They all do it. Thank you very much. I know that we could talk about you this. Cannot accuse I've the, learned cannot more than I ever thought I would about affairs. French politics. This is absolutely rubbish. <laughs> no, we must, just stop, we must just stop for the headlines. Thank you all very much.